Everybody who owns a Raspberry Pi probably knows what a magic mirror is. It's likely the most popular Raspberry Pi project out there because it's one of the most visual projects and is relatively easy to make. I've been wanting to make one for a while, but with a twist. It's not a mirror. It's just a monitor. This isn't really that big of a twist because the magic mirror without a mirror thing has been done many times already, and there are tons of magic mirror videos out there. The difference with this guide is that I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step process to make exactly what I made so you won't have an excuse not to make it. I guarantee you that this is not a how to draw an owl type of video. If you have a spare or secondary monitor, you can make this for around $35 right freaking meow, which is probably the cheapest smart dashboard you can make. With all that said, this video is going to show you how to use the magic mirror software to make a smart dashboard without the mirror. For my dashboard, I've added my Microsoft to-do list, my security camera feed, my Google Calendar, the weather, some stocks that I want to keep track of, a fact generator thing, and a background slideshow which uses my pictures. This thing has been very useful to me so far, and it looks super cool. There's a ton of customization options with the Magic Mirror software, and you don't have to set yours up to look like mine, but I'm going to show you exactly how to make what I've made. And there's really not too much magic involved. It's simple and cheap to make, costing only $25 for the Raspberry Pi kit on Amazon. Click the timestamps if you want to skip to certain sections in this video, or just continue watching for some background information before we get started. I've wanted to build this for a while because I'd seen a bunch of videos of it on Reddit. The default magic mirror installation is very basic, I'd seen that some people installed modules to hook into their Google Home or Alexa to display information like what song was playing, so I figured there were other cool modules like this. I did some research and found some really cool ones that I wanted to implement. There are tons of third party modules listed on the Magic Mirror GitHub, so definitely check those out to see if there are any that intrigue you. As a forewarning though, many of them, when I tried to implement them, did not work for me. This may be due to Magic Mirror updates breaking these modules, as some are very old and not maintained, or it might be because the hardware is not compatible because I built my Magic Dashboard on a Raspberry Pi 0W, which is not recommended hardware for this project. But it works. By the way, there does exist other dashboard software that you could run on Raspberry Pis, like Dackboard, but you have to pay for those, and why do that when the Magic Mirror can do the same thing? For free. As for why I decided not to make it into an actual mirror, I didn't really want to spend the time and money building it out, and I figured a regular monitor would do the trick for me, but building it into a mirror might be something I want to do in the future. So here's what you need to get this done. You're gonna need a Raspberry Pi 0W, monitor, an SD card reader, and a micro SD card, a separate computer or another Raspberry Pi that you will use to connect from, Quick side note, you can actually run the Magic Dashboard on the Raspberry Pi itself without having to connect from another computer, which is actually the intended use of the Magic Mirror. But since it's a Raspberry Pi 0, it's not as powerful as a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, so it's not able to run the software as well. You could upgrade to a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, but it costs a little bit more, which is not in line with the objective of this video. To be as cost effective as possible, you can just run the Magic Mirror server on the Raspberry Pi Zero, and then run the Magic Mirror client, which is a website you open in your web browser on your primary computer. The last requirement, which isn't really a requirement, but more so of a recommendation, is that I would recommend that you have a basic knowledge of Linux. With that said, this is a great beginner product for starting your journey with Linux. You should just know that troubleshooting may be tough if you don't know your way around Linux operating systems. Now that we got all that stuff out of the way, we can start with the installation process. The detailed installation and configuration steps are detailed in my guide, and it honestly would just be easier to follow the guide step by step, but I'll give you the high level overview here. The first step in all of this is to install the Raspbian operating system onto an SD card. First, you want to format your SD card using an SD card formatter software like SD card formatter. This will get rid of any pre-existing data and make sure the card is clean for when you flash the OS onto the card, which you'll be doing with a software like Etcher. 
Once this is complete, you'll add a file onto the Pi so that you can remotely control it from your computer. This way you don't have to connect a monitor or keyboard directly to the Pi. From there you'll plug the SD card into the Pi and power it on. You can use an IP scanner to figure out what IP you'll need to connect to. Once you've connected, we're ready to configure it. There's a bunch of things you can do to tweak the Pi to how you need it, but here's the basics of what you need to get started. All of this is again detailed in the guide, so it doesn't really make sense for me to go over them in detail here. First things first, you're going to want to change the default password for the Pi user, because if you don't, bad guys could get into your Pi and do bad things. Then you're going to want to run this raspi config command and set these settings. Then update your OS and software, grab all this other software, then you're ready to create the scripts that actually start the Magic Mirror software. And then you can start it. Starting it for the first time is pretty exciting, even though it's pretty bare. You can access your dashboard from a web browser by typing the IP of your Pi in the address bar, followed by a colon and 8080. Give yourself a pat on the back for getting this far, and get ready to dive into configuring the modules. Configuring modules is pretty basic. All you gotta do is browse through that list of third-party modules in the Magic Mirror GitHub, find one that you like, and install it. To install it, you're gonna wanna pull it down from GitHub, then run npm install within the directory you pull down the files from. After that, you can configure the modules to your liking by adding a section in the magicmirrorconfig.js file with the settings you choose. Some modules are simple, like the on this day module that tells you a random history fact. You don't have to do much for these types of modules. Other modules have API integrations, like the Microsoft to-do module. Configuring these are a little bit more involved. Most, if not all, modules have a README section, which describes what settings you need to configure and if you need to do anything extra, which makes configuring the more complex modules a lot easier. The reason I'm blurring out most of the screen is because if someone were to get a hold of one of my API keys or tokens, they could use it and have control over whatever I have in MS to do. On that note, if you're ever planning on sharing your Magic Mirror configurations with somebody else, make sure to always redact this type of information. After you've configured all your modules, you're ready to show off the final product. And now you're done. Hopefully you're satisfied with the result. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to reach out to me in either the YouTube comments or my Instagram and if you have any questions, comments, or feedback. This is my first ever YouTube video, so I'll need all the feedback that I can get. Let me know if you liked it by hitting the like button, and I'll see you in the next video.